Hello everyone, I'm Di Xintang from the University of Chicago. Today I'd like to present our work of toward coordination free and the reconfigurable mixed concurrency control. Hardware development has changed the database architecture. A traditional disk-based database is designed for a machine with a few cores, small memory, and a large disk. In that architecture, disk stores can dominate the performance. In recent years, we have seen that memory capacity has increased dramatically, such that the whole database can be kept in memory. Therefore, the disk stores are no longer the performance bottleneck. On the other hand, the increased number of CPU cores within a machine has introduced more concurrent read-write operations. Therefore, concurrency control has become the new bottleneck. Let's take a closer look at concurrency control. Database is accessed via transaction, which is a sequence of read-write operations to be executed atomically. Transactions are executed concurrently by multiple working threads to access the database records. Here, concurrency control is used to co op coordinate concurrent operations. It has two goals. First, it interleaves concurrent operations to maximize the performance. Second, it can guarantee consistency. One, one criteria to guarantee consistency is serializability, which says the result of interleaved execution of concurrent transactions is equivalent to the result of executing the transactions in one serial order. In recent years, we have seen many new protocols are proposed, but most, but they are largely optimized for specific scenarios. Consider part CC, a partition-based single-thread concurrency control. It partitions the database records and assign each partition a working thread and a partition lock. If transactions only access records within one partition, it only needs to obtain the partition lock and execute without any more concurrency control. However, if the if transaction need to access records in remote partition, it needs to request remote partition lock, which can block other threads. Therefore, cross partition transactions can hurt the performance. In that case, we may consider optimistic concurrency control. It does not block transactions normal execution, and uh, put all writes into a private buffer. After that, it validates whether transactions violate serializability. It performs well under low conflicted workloads, but conflicts can hurt the performance because conflicts can cause transactions validation fail and restart the transaction. In a con highly conflict workload, we consider two-phase locking, which means transactions need to request locks before each read-write operations. It performs well under highly conflict workloads, but it suffers from concurrent con higher concurrent control overhead and synchronization overhead, especially in a multi-core setting. We perform an experiment on our main memory database prototype using YCSP workloads and test three protocols. We find that in each scenario, different protocol can excel, which means one concurrent control does not fit all. Therefore, we consider a general solution of mixed concurrent control, which means we can incorpor incorporate several protocols into one database and apply each protocol to a part of the workload. It has two benefits. First, each protocol can process the part of workload it is optimized for. Second, 
Each protocol can avoid being brittle to workload where it does not perform well. There are two challenges of mixed concurrent control. First, how to partition a workload and mix multiple protocols efficiently. Second, how to reconfigure a protocol when the workload changes. One previous approach of mixed concurrent control is to partition store procedures by conflicts. Store procedure is a parameterized transaction template. Users can provide parameters to generate transactions. It includes thematic information of tables to be read-write or orders of reading-writing tables. Previous approach groups store procedure by conflicts extracted from their semantic information and assign each group a protocol to process conflicts within that group. And finally, introduce additional concurrent control protocols to process conflicts across groups. Here are four store procedures that are grouped into three. Each group is assigned a protocol and then additional protocols are introduced to process conflicts across um, groups. It has two major drawbacks. The first is it relies on static semantic information, therefore cannot adapt to varied workloads. Second is that for each operation, it needs to go through multiple pro protocols, which introduces introduces the overhead of multiple concurrent control execution for a single operation. We take a new perspective of mixed concurrent control, which is partition records by access characteristics. For example, if it is partitionable, we can use partition-based single-thread approach. For low, lonely conflicted records, we can use validation-based approach. Finally, for highly conflict records, we can use knocking based approach. Therefore, we pre present COMCC, a co coordination free and reconfigurable mixed concurrency control. Our approach is to partition database records and assign each partition a single protocol. A single protocol is used to process all operations for that partition of records. There are two benefits of this method. First, it is reconfigurable, which means we partition records depending on real-time database and data access characteristics, which makes online protocol reconfigura reconfiguration possible. Second, it is coordination-free, which means no additional concurrent control protocols are introduced because we let one protocol to process all operations for that partition of workloads, uh, partition of records. To achieve the two goals, we need to answer four questions. First, how, to, how does CORMCC execute? How to maintain serializability? How to guarantee that are free? And how to enable online protocol switch? Let's look at the first one. We break a transaction's lifecycle into four phases, which are pre-process, execution, validation, and commit. We find most protocols can fit into this four-phase model. If one protocol does not have a specific phase, we just introduce a no-op function here. A transaction first goes through the pre-process pre phase of all protocols. For example, in port CC, it needs to request and obtain all partition logs before its ex normal execution. In the execution phase, we use a specific protocol to process each operation, depending on which record it needs to access. And then it goes through validation phase and the commit phase respect of all protocols respectively. The validation phase will validate whether the transaction violates serializability. And the commit phase make or apply all rights 
and make them visible to other transactions. The second question is, is COMCC maintain, does COMCC maintain serializability? While each protocol can maintain serializability, this might not be true for COMCC. Therefore, we use a property that is shared by many protocols to maintain serializability, which is commit ordering conflict serializable. It is a sufficient condition of serializable, and it says commit ordering respects conflicts. For example, in this case, two transactions have a conflict on a one record. Because transaction 1 reads the record before transaction 2 writes it, the COCSR protocol will guarantee transaction 1 commits before transaction 2. We prove that if all protocols are COCSR, then COMCC is COCSR. Proof detail can be found in the paper. Next, we answer the question how to make COMCC deadlock free. A straightforward method is to use a wait for a graph to detect the deadlock. However, we do not want to introduce any new or additional concurrence control overhead. Therefore, we take another approach of deadlock prevention. We require that each protocol can only ex exclusively let transactions wait in no more than one phase. This means two things. First, there is no deadlock within one phase. Second, transactions in earlier phases can wait for later phases, but not the other way around. Next, we answer our fourth question. How can we enable online protocol reconfiguration? Online reconfiguration can cause inconsistency. For example, we want to switch an old protocol to a new protocol for a partition of record uh, for a partition of records. Each working thread changes protocol when the current transaction finishes. During that process, there is a chance that two working threads are using different protocols to access the same partition of records. Therefore, conflicts between the two threads may not be detected. One straightforward method is to stop all transaction workers or working threads to receive new transactions and then perform switch when all, transac all transaction workers stop. But this can greatly decrease the performance of database. We take a new solution by using a mediated protocol that is compatible to both old and new protocols, such that the conflicts can be detected. At first, we require all working threads change their protocol from old CC to the mediated protocol. When every uh, when when all working threads have switched to mediated protocol then we let them switch back. During this process, because mediated um, protocol is compatible to both old and new, the conflicts can be detected. The question is how to build a mediated protocol. The mediated protocol, we build a mediated protocol by executing the logics of both old and new protocol. For example, the mediated um, protocol between OCC and 2PL needs to execute the logics of both. In the, if you want to read a record, it needs to read the timestamp and apply read log. And if you want to write write a write a record, you need to write to a local buffer for OCC and also apply write log. In the validation phase, it uses the validation phase of OCC to verify whether a transaction violates the serializability. We design prototype that supports RCC from XStore, OCC from Silo, and 2PL from VLL. VLL is a lightweight and optimized 
two-phase locking that removes the, the centralized lock manager and co-locates lock with database records. We partition the whole database and apply each partition a single pro, um, pro protocol. To select the ideal protocol for each partition, we perform an engineering by designing several features to capture the performance difference of different candidate protocols. Based on that, we design a two-layer classifier to predict which, which protocol should be used for each partition. We perform experiments on a machine with 32 cores, 256 gigabytes memory. We use two workloads, TPCC and YCSB. We generate 32 warehouses for TPCC and uh, one table with one million records for YCSB. What we partition on each workload into 32 partitions. We, our experiments compare COMCC with single candidate protocols, a hybrid approach of OCC and two-phase locking. Tabelli, a stored procedure oriented general framework of mixed concurrence control. We use the Tabelli configuration for TPCC from the original paper, which is reported having the best performance. In that configuration, transact and store procedure new order and payment are grouped together and managed by runtime pipeline. Runtime pipeline is opti optimized to face knocking. And then delivery is in a single group. Order status and the stock level are managed by snapshot isolation. We first perform an experiment to compare HomeCC with Tabaldi. We vary the partitionability, which means we start with a partitionable workload where each partition receives 100 single partition transactions. And then we increase the number of partitions receiving 100% cross partition transactions, which means we make the whole workload non partitionable. We can see that at first, CC performs much better than Tabelli and two-phase knocking, and its performance gets closer to two-phase knocking at last. In that, we, we can also see that Tabelli performs slightly worse than two-phase knocking because of its additional mixed concurrency control. Then we, com we compare on the different uh, conflicts rate. We use ZFN distribution and increase its theta parameter to introduce higher conflicts. We can see that in high, highly conflict workload, Tabelli can process conflicts better and has higher performance. This, this, the two experiments show the trade-off between HomeCC and Tabaldi. Tabaldi can process conflicts more efficiently with additional mixed concurrency control overhead. But HomeCC try to, tries to mix concurrency control with, without, with low overhead. Next, we test we perform a test over varied workload. We vary parameters every five seconds and report the results of a uh, hundred seconds. We find that Corm CC can perform best in most of the case. Let's take a closer look at the same results of varied workload workload test. We aggregate the throughput of every five seconds and report Corm CC throughput ratio to single protocols which includes the, the speed up over the worst single protocols and uh, over the best single protocols and speed up over the average through, uh, throughput of single protocols. We find that COMCC has a significant improvement over single protocols and can perform better than, than the best protocols in most of the case. 
Next, we perform a way test mediated protocol switch. We perform a switch from OCC to true face locking using YCSB workloads and compare with stop or approach. We test a workload with short only transactions and workloads with a one long transaction of different durations and also test different switching points. We find that mediated protocol a mediated approach can maintain a good throughput throughout the switch process, but st stop or and performance bad because it cannot receive new transactions during the switch process. To conclude, we present CORMCC, a general mixed concur concurrency control framework that does not introduce any coordination overhead and supports online reconfiguration. Our experiments show that CORMCC can achieve significant throughput improvement over single static protocols and state-of-the-art mixed approaches. Thank you.